Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be continuing with our rock texture and we're going to be having a look specifically at adding in some shadows uh, and highlights. Now in the previous video we had a look at creating some outlines. We also had a look at the offset tool. Um, now this is exactly the point where we left off. Now in terms of um, where we go from here we have to start painting shadows and highlights. And before I do this I want to switch uh, to this particular um, offset. This is the one that I kind of think works best. I think the layout's a little bit cleaner um, and it just looks a little bit uh, a little bit nicer to my eyes. You might be thinking that the other one looks best uh, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we can kind of come back at the end and choose which one we want for sure once all of the details put in place. Now we've already got some layers set up on the right hand side here. Some of you will already have noticed. Uh, the, the layers we're going to be using today are the shadow layer and the light layer. If you don't have these Please can you add these now, we can do this just by clicking uh, the layers button here twice um, and we layer the bottom one shadow and the top one light. Now we're going to start with the shadow and what I want is for the light to be coming in um, from the top here. Okay, So the light's going to be looking straight down um, from the top to the bottom. So as with the previous example in the introduction to hand painting stuff, we're going to have three sides in shadow and one, shi one side uh, as a highlight. So let's start with the shadows. Now to do this we need to increase the brush size. Now I'm going to increase the brush size to 6 and I'm just going to reduce the hardness to maybe 35 something like that. This is going to allow us to kind of really create some, some nice detailed shadows. I'm not going to change the opacity, I'm going to keep that as it is. Now I'm going to start absolutely anywhere. It makes no difference where we start just as long as we do start. Um, and as somebody once told me, start with the most uh, the most difficult of what appears to be uh, the most difficult. And we can do that just here. So I'm going to start in the middle here and I'm just going to very lightly start painting in um, some shadows. I'm, going to get to corners. I'm just going to cut those corners. I might just increase the brush size in this case actually to an 8 as opposed to a 6 and we just put in some of these shadows here. Um, and you'll notice that as we kind of add these shadows um, that the, the the bricks kind of almost come to life. Um, and this is something that uh, hand painted materials has kind of the unique ability uh, to produce. Now we need to add highlights and shadows to every single one of these um, and we can be here for absolute days. So it, in the first video I suggested that we uh, we use kind of uh, small or should I say larger bricks otherwise we're going to be here um, and this is exactly what I meant here so I'm just going to spend a little bit of time adding in some uh, some shadows here um, and where it comes to the corners don't be afraid to overlap some of that shadow and again don't be afraid to uh, to kind of like almost shake the brush as you do it to kind of create these kind of little, little divots here. Um, this might look really messy at this point but later on when we're adding in these kind of like the sharp highlights to really bring out the depth uh, of these kind of objects um, or these bricks it's going to make it look incredible so it's really important that we consider that step right from the get-go and we're really trying to look for those kinds of details right up front. So you'll notice as I get to the corners I literally am just trying to drawing um, kind of like a, a diagonal line. If I show you here a little bit clearer, a little bit slower, I kind of do my initial shadow, come to the corner. I'm not even painting into the corner, I just kind of do a line and, I, and I'm not going backwards and forwards. I'm, I'm literally taking my pen off the canvas and kind of flicking in a diagonal line um, and I move my pen every time I do it and this kind of just creates this this kind of noise in the shadow and this really gives us some 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 interesting effects when we we're adding in the uh, highlights uh, later on. You know here I'm just adding in the shadows. And we're going to be doing this to absolutely every brick uh, possible. Try not to kind of uh, replicate any of the shadows. Try and keep them all a little bit unique. Um, and try and be a little bit kind of creative. Don't be afraid to really bring in some of these shadows in fact. Don't don't feel like you have to keep them right on the edge. You can really bring them in. You don't have to keep any of these bricks symmetrical either. Go over any shadows that you think need to be gone over. And really make them obvious. Really make them look like awesome shadows. And try and just have a little bit of fun while you're doing it. This is therapeutic. It can be a little bit tiring. If you don't have um, any patience. This is just going to be soul destroying work for you. Um, but th this is kind of one of the most important steps of, of hand painted material generation. Okay. Now we are going to offset this layer 
Uh, we're going to have to offset the background layer as we as we offset this layer as well. So um, every layer that we kind of add, we have to offset to make sure that we are tiling the detail properly. Um, and you'll see that's why I'm not really doing any of these uh, outside bricks yet. Um, why I wait until we kind of uh, we have the offset ready to do that. So this is probably as far as I'm going to get down here. I'm not going to go into any detail. Like here, for instance, I might paint this one down um, to the bottom, but we're certainly not going to try and uh, match it up here. Uh, you can have a go at doing that if you like, um, but when we offset, you'll find that you've kind of got a little bit of a line, and you end up having to rub it out. So it is better um, as we're kind of painting these shadows just to kind of stick to the middle and then uh, add the other shadows once we've once we've used that offset tool to flip to flip the material. Okay, so I've just got the top ones left to do now. Uh, a lot of people say, can we add shadows to the top? Well, you know, the answer is, uh, yeah, you can. Um, as long as we're going to over overwrite these shadows with highlights, all they're going to end up looking like is just kind of little bits of damage. Um, and try and create different things. So, for instance, here, if I kind of create like a little semicircle there, well, that's just going to end up being kind of a damaged section of the brick, which tends to work out really well. some of these here. Again, if you mess this up, don't panic. Just keep keep going. Just overwrite it. Don't don't feel like you've got to go for perfection at this point. Um, as we had a look at in the introduction video, we're going to be using sharp highlights to really clean up some of these shadows and highlights. So, you know, just kind of have a little bit of fun. Just just play around with the shadows here. Um, now, that's pretty much it. I've got one more I can do here, actually. Uh, but that's pretty much, after this one, that is pretty much um, all, all we can do. I'm um, just making sure I haven't missed any. I think I've missed one here. Um, a clever human being would have kind of gone left to right and done them all properly. Uh, that is not me. Okay, fantastic. So what we need to do now is we need to offset this layer and we also need to offset the outline layer. So I'm going to press Control on F here and I'm going to press uh, my outline layer and I'm going to press Control on F. And you can see now that all of those uh, bricks that weren't shadowed before, well, we can now add those shadows in without any worry that they're not going to tile beautifully when we're done. So I'm going to add these ones here. Kind of add in some of this detail. And with the big tiles, don't be afraid to kind of uh, really focus on adding in some of that detail in these corners here. Like pick up the pen, drop the pen almost, kind of like do a like stab your stab your tablet almost. Just kind of really create these kind of softish these softish edges. And you're going to end up creating some really nice detail. A lot of people will say to me, "What's the what's the secret to creating good hand painting materials?" And really, it's just it's just the small details. It's it it's it's creating um, a material that when you first look at it, um, you can see some detail. But the more you look at it, detail kind of almost appears at you. Um, and and this kind of sounds like a ridiculous concept until you find a material that does it. And the closer you look, the more kind of like surface detail will appear. The more these little corner details will appear. And that's what we're going to try and produce with this particular material um, uh, as, as we progress uh, through the stages. Just adding in some shadow here. And I think I don't think we've got any more. I don't think I've left any. Oh, I've got one here that I haven't done. Just kind of add these things in here. I've got one more here that I haven't done. I'm not going to go right into the center here. But again, don't be afraid to add your X. And we can control an F. Go back to our Shadows layer, control on F, and it's this one here, so we can just finish this off. And that's absolutely fine now. Let's get rid of the X once we're done. Oh, that was in the outline layer, let's get rid of that. And we can come to the shadow layer here. So that's pretty much it for the shadows. Uh, now the highlights is almost exactly the same process. So I'm going to click on light, I'm going to switch my canvas to white. I'm not going to change any of my, um, my brush settings, I'm just going to start by adding in these highlights at the top pressing much much lighter than we did with the shadows just curving some of these edges here really kind of creating a top to these tablets it's really important that we we don't just kind of draw a line it doesn't work we've kind of really got to adopt the shape uh, that's what we're going to kind of do here so we're going to kind of continue pressing very lightly with these highlights Do the same with the, the large brick in the middle. 
I do the same with some of the smaller ones as well. And after a little while you get quite proficient at drawing these lines and just kind of following the shape of the bricks. And they become a little bit easier a little bit easier to draw and see. And you can really see that these begin to pop off the screen. These begin to really look 3D as as we kind of go here. Now the same deal applies with, with all of the other layers that we've done so far. We don't want to go too close to the edge. We want to try and keep the highlights nice and succinct. We want to keep them in the middle. And then once we're done, we can press Control on F. We can come to Shadows, press Control on F. And then finally we can come to Outline, press Control on F. Um, so we, we have to, essentially, we have to offset every single layer that we have underneath this particular one um, just to make sure that we're putting these these highlights in the right place and you can really see it's 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 well worth spending the time doing this because you end up with some really awesome looking bricks okay I don't think I've missed any I'm just going to work go back through the stack and just place here, I do the light here, see if I've missed any, I don't think I have, I think I've got them all pretty, pretty well done. Sometimes zooming out can really help you see the effect, if we zoom out here you can really see the difference between kind of being right and close um, and being further out. And that's kind of it for the highlights and shadows. Um, it's it kind of it always seems really really impressive when you see it, but actually um, it's it's not particularly tough to get this stuff done. It's it's a really simple technique that we can utilize uh, over and over again. Um, now that's it for this particular video. In the next video, we're going to be adding some really cool damage, and we're going to be looking at how we can create um, some real depth, and we'll also be having a look at that sharp highlight layer. I hope this video has been useful. I hope you've had a bit of fun. Um, I look forward to showing you some cool stuff again soon. Thank you very much for watching.